Shabbat Shalom, Ms. Bakad, this is Mori Medan Yahoo Ben Yashrael. Want to welcome you to another broadcast of Living Branch Hebrew Assembly. We are elated to have you on board, and we're going to continue our series today on worship. And today's going to be part three how to approach. And it's going to be a good lesson. So, um, and it's going to lead to another lesson, which is going to be more more integral than uh, this one. So it's going to be very interesting how the father progresses this one. Just just to give you a little insight, I was uh, just asking the father uh, just um, this week. I was like, Father, I really don't know how to go about um figuring out or telling the people the next part to this lesson what do you want me to tell them and then the father started to show me how and what he wanted to say he he i heard him in in a very audible voice and he he described it to me to a t and i won't get to that right now but we'll get to it as we get into the lesson and this is basically how this lesson came about when um, when I asked him specifically, what did he want me to tell you? I asked him that for every lesson, but this one, I was kind of stumped on which direction to go. And so, you know, I try not to rely on my own, you know, what I want to do. And I tried to seek his face and he uh, spoke and said, this is what you teach on and this is how you do it. I was like, okay, father, I can do that. And so I wasn't, um, after he told me that I was like, okay, well, I'm not exactly sure how you want me to put it together. And he showed me that too. I was, uh, up very early this morning, um, putting this lesson finishing touches on this lesson so I was like oh yes father thank you and when and when I finish the lesson I can see where he wants us to go with this lesson so it should be um, for some of us it might be a review for others it's going to be um, revelation or he's going to reveal some things to us so Let's just do a few preliminaries. If you want to email me, you can email me at living info at living dash branch dot org. And we are reaching out globally. Our witnessing website is www.yahua.co. Our main website is living dash branch dot org. And our auxiliary organization is Hebrew Foundation dot org. So let's pray and let's get into this lesson. Baruch Hashem Yahuwah Elohim Malik HaAlam. Father, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for showing us and giving us insight. Couldn't have done it without you. We rely solely on you. We thank you, Father, for our audience all across the globe. Thank you for those that tuned in uh, from all around the world. We thank you, Father, for the miracles and for the favor that you have shown them that are new to your name and that are believing on your name and believing in Messiah Yahusha. I pray, Father, that you continue to give them insight. I pray that you continue to show them favor and witnesses that this is the truth, that this is your name and that what they're living Though people might question it, they continue to show faith and believe in your scriptures and you will continue to confirm yourself in them. Now, Father, I pray as we go into this lesson that you help us to um, take heed and to follow the instructions that you lay out before us. In the name of Messiah, Yahusha, Hallel to Yahuwah. Amen. 
All right, Ms. Bacow, um we um, want to thank um, everyone again for joining for joining us. It is uh, Shabbat, and it's definitely a pleasure and a privilege to um, be in another Shabbat. So, let's get into this lesson, because I think this lesson... It's going to be very insightful for for us. Okay, now we've already been over the basic word for worship, which is shaha. <coughs> Excuse me, shaha. And we want to um, continue to emphasize what the the sheen is, teeth or uh, consume. Uh, the chet is in a room fence, and the hay is a man with his hand raised. It means behold or reveal. So we look at uh, consume, reveal fence, or consume, behold, enter room. And we know that the father, according to Deuteronomy 4 and 24, Elohim, Yahuwah, for Yahuwah the Elohim is a consuming fire, even a jealous hell. And we know the first place that it was used in Bereshit 18.2, we see the person bowing down to prostrate or depress themselves, to pay homage to a royalty or a uh, or to Elohim. Okay, so we're trying to learn how to approach and as I was doing this lesson, the father spoke to me and he said that we're supposed to approach his children and keep in mind, we are called the children of Israel. And we'll get into that meaning here in a minute. So what I want you to do, I want you to go to, um, if you, for those that like to follow along in their own scripture, and I'm reading from a King James base translation. So it's Matthew chapter 19, verse 13. Then were there brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray. And the disciples rebuked them. But Yahusha said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me. For of such is the kingdom of heaven, and he laid his hands on them and departed thence. So what I want to do, let's go over here. Let's look at chapter 19. And we'll go here. And what I want to do is kind of look at the verses before and then the verses after. Now look here. And because now what you're going to find out the verses before, because we're going to look in three different places, the verses before always said something different. But the verses after talk about the how you turn, how do you inherit eternal life, which is keeping the commandments. This the keeping commandments theme is in every place I'm going to show you. But the before verses are always different in the three places that I'm going to show you. Okay, now look at this one. Um, this one is talking about marriage and stuff. And I'll just start he, here. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. And what is it talking about? This is where the disciples, um, let's just to add clarity. And his disciples said unto him, If the case of the man be so with his wife, it is not good to marry. But he said unto them, All men cannot receive this sin, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. And and there be eunuchs, which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. 
He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. And then we go into the discourse about the little children. So, and what, and what I'm gathering from this, we all going to start at different points. But the end result we need to come to is that we, when, when we approach him, we come in the spirit of, of a child. And as we progress, keeping his commandments come right after that. Okay, so now let's jump back over. You'll see as we put this together what I'm, what I'm seeing. If you feel a little bit off right now, that's, that's fine. Um, it, will, it will make sense here in a few minutes. Okay, now let's go to Mark. Same discourse. Okay, and Mark says, Mark 10, verse 13. And they brought young children to him that he should touch them. And his disciples, notice who's always the, the gatekeepers here. The disciples don't want the children to come. And the disciples rebuked these that brought them. But when Yahusha saw it, he was was much displeased and said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of Elohim. Verily, I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim as a little child, he shall not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, and he put his hands upon them and blessed them. So now let's go to Mark 13. Let's look at Mark 13 and see what we can find. Mark 13. I'll make it a little bit bigger and let's go down. Let's see. Let me make sure I'm giving you the right verse. Oh, excuse me, it's Mark 10. Know why I was thinking 13, Mark 10, verse 13. Okay, now let I'm gonna just show you when you go down here, it's the same story afterwards. When the man is asking, What shall I do to inherit eternal life? and he tells him to keep the commandments, but the but the story before the children coming is a little different. It's talking about um, marriage and being one flesh. And in the house, his disciples asked him again the same matter and said unto him, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another committeth adultery against her. Now, if you need to understand this, you need to go to my series on adultery and fornication. Okay. Then it says, and if a woman shall put away her husband and shall be married to another, she committeth adultery. And then we go into the little children. So now the other issue, we got one more we're going to read. So everybody's not exactly the same where we're at in our states before. But the end result is when we approach him, we have to approach him from the standpoint of a little child. Okay, so let's go back over. We're going to look in one more place. Luke 18, verse 15. And they brought unto him also infants. Now, the word for children and infants is different uh, in the Greek. So these are infants. The other ones were children, but this is these are infants. That he might touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Yahusha called them unto himself and said, Suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of Elohim. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Elohim as a little child shall in no wise enter therein. So let's go over to Luke 18. Okay, now look after here. We got the story of the rich young of the certain ruler. And 
he's asking basically um, what he must do to inherit eternal life. And the Mashiach tells him, keep the commandments. Now, before this, we have the story of the, the uh, and we'll read it, uh, a parable of those who trust in themselves. So everybody's, everything before in these three discourses have been a little different. Now let's read this. And he spake this parable unto certain who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Now I hope that's not you. Because little children, who do they put their trust in? Put their trust in their parents. And who who's our father? Yahuwah. Okay, we, I'm going to leave it at that. Two men went into the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. Elohim, I thank thee that I am not as the other men which are extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican comparing himself to the publican saying I'm better than him. Now you're going to find out when you when 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 it comes down to worship this should you shouldn't be comparing yourself to anybody because all of us going to be building ourselves after one pattern. So it's not looking at the other person to see where they're at and where you're at, but looking at the pattern that's been established. Now notice what he says. I fast twice in a week. I give tithes. Oh, there's that tithe issue, but we'll leave that low. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican stood far off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote his breast, saying, Allahim be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other for one for one that exalted himself shall be abased and he that humbleth humbleth himself shall be exalted and then we have the discourse about the infant i mean about the children okay now where is this all leading us to where where am i trying to take you where is the father taking us well, basically what has happened to us, we've lost our innocence. We've lost our innocence in all the things that we've come in contact with, uh, all the things in the world and all the, uh, the environment. And we'll, we'll show you how you get back there. But little children operate in innocence there. Most of their questions are innocent. Um, you know, their approach is innocent. They're genuine in their thought process. They have no ulterior motive, you know, when they're approaching. So we're going to see this. Now, the word for innocent here is naki. Naki in Hebrew. And you'll see here, it means innocent, blameless. That's how it's translated. Now, it's from the word naka, naka, which is, means to be clean, literally or figurative, by implication, to be bare. So, there's, there's nothing extra. You just, it's just what it is. It's clean. It's nothing attached to it, nothing growing out of it. But, you know, we're we're so consumed with living and, and other things that, you know, it, it distracts us. So let's keep looking here. I want to give you a place where this is used. Okay. And I thought the um hold on 
got ahead of myself. I thought the Psalm of uh, David, Psalm 24, was great. It says, The earth is Yahuwah's, and the fullness thereof, and the world, and they that dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Now, I want you to listen very close to this, Mishpachah. Who shall ascend into the mountain of Yahuwah? Or who shall stand in his set, it should be set apart place? Notice what it says. He that has clean hands, that's that word that's translated innocent. And a pure heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Yahuwah and righteousness from Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him and seek thy face, O Yaakov, or Jacob, Selah. So let's go back over here. Let's pull up our, go to Psalm 24. So I want you to see, I want you to see this, that we, we have to get back to this innocence as a child type demeanor to, to, uh, in our approach. Okay. Because it asks the question, who has ascended to the heel of Yahuwah? And who shall stand in his set apart, O Kadesh, Kodesh, place? And it gives you a definition. He that has clean hands, and I'm going to show you here, it's the same word that we were using for innocence. See? Clean hands, and then we looked at what? The root word was, which was naka, naka, and this is the root when it says prime root, that means it's the root word to be clean by implication in an adverse sense to be bare. Clean hands now, koof, koof. So, what your hands are doing. You know, the hollow of your hand is your palm. And it's from um, Ka'af to curve. So what is your what is your hand? Is your hand now remember if you have a closed hand, the idiom says that you're stingy. But if you have an open hand, you're liberal. So, what type hand do you have? Is your hand clean? In, in other words, you haven't done anybody wrong, shed innocent blood. You haven't done anything deceitful. Your hand are pure before him. And what is pure? Pure right there. The word is nakaf, like I said. And it means they're clean, they're bare. You don't have, you haven't done anything wrong hand wise in what you're doing to others. Now notice it talks about a pure, which that word there, pure, is bar. Beloved, also pure, empty, beloved. Now heart. Now the word here, it comes from. <coughs> Okay, the word is leba. Now they'll say leva in modern Hebrew, but it's lebab. And here you're seeing his heart, the most internal organ. Used also like, but notice where it comes from. Let's look at where it comes from, which is labab. And to be enclosed as if with fat by implication. To unheart in a good sense, transport it. Transport with love. Uh, that's interesting. So, our thought process, how we 
approach? How are we approaching? What's where where are our thoughts? Where is the innermost part of us? Is it pure? Is it operating with love? Because remember here, and let's go back to 24. Excuse me, 24 here. It's still a staff. Now remember, bet can mean house and it can also mean in when you put a bet in front of a, a, a another word it means in so you know if we were looking at this teaching in house what's the teaching in our house what's the teaching in our house what's the the first things you hear the Father, and thou shalt love Yahuwah, the Elohim, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. And then you can sum up the next ones as love thy neighbor as thyself. So love is the teaching that's within the house. So when we talk about, you know, all of this wrapped up, you know, if our hands are pure, then we're exhibiting the teaching that's in the house. If our heart is pure, we're exhibiting the teachings that are within the house. We're, our thoughts are on those teachings and doing those teachings. And we have not lifted up our soul in vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from Yahuwah and righteousness from Elohim of his salvation. This is the generation. Listen to this. This is the generation of them that seek him and that seek thy face. O Yaakov Selah. Children love genuinely. That's, you know, we got old and, uh, you know, foggy stogie and we don't put all these prerequisites on why I love or why I should love. So let's keep going. But I, I hope this is helping some. Now, let's talk about children. Okay, now children can be translated Depending on the depending on the context, the same word that's used for son, bang, is the same word that's used for children, bang. Depending on the context. And I'm going to show you this. Uh, depending on the context is how the word is translated. So I took Baratheon sheet seventeen twelve. He that is eight days old. So the word for old here is bang. Shall be circumcised. So the reason it's translated old, we understand it's talking about a son, but it but the eight days is referenced to time. So he's eight days old. That's why they translated it like that. Shall be circumcised among you and every child in your generation. He that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. Now that same word there is bane. Why did they translate it as stranger? Because of the context. He that is born in the house or born uh, or brought with money. See, this brought with money makes them a stranger. But it's, it's translated as stranger, but the word there is bang. Okay, now, this is where I want you to really see. It comes from the root word for this is bana. See this, bana. And it means to build. Okay. 
The root word for son is bana, and it means to build, obtain children. This is how it's translated. Um, build, builder, to begin building, obtain children, make, repair, set up, surely. So I want you to hold on this to this, to build. Now, the root word, like I said, for children slash son, bane, means to build or to make. So let's look at a few places. Because we're still talking about how to approach. And, and this is going to culminate. And, and you'll see. And Noah built an altar unto Yahuwah. And took every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Genesis of Bereshit chapter 11 verse 8. So Yahuwah scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of the, all the earth and they left off from building the city. Okay, that was Babylon. So you can build for him or you can build against him. If you build against him, you're going to be scattered. But if you build correctly, you're going to command his audience, his presence. So we want to build to command his presence because that's what worship entails. Commanding his presence, bringing his presence because we're prostrated before him. Okay, Genesis chapter 12, verse 17 and Yahu appeared unto Abram and said unto thy seed will I give this land. And there built he an altar unto Yahuwah who appeared unto him. Okay, Genesis chapter 35 verse 7. And he built an altar and called the place El Bethel. Because there Elohim appeared unto him when he fled from his the face of his brother. Okay, still talking about children, but we're talking about the root word, bana, which means to build. If thou will make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not hew it of stone, of thou shalt not build it of hewn stones. For if thy lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Okay, so you couldn't carve out a stone because that's what it means to cue out. You couldn't uh, craft a stone and then want to make it an altar. Okay, Shemoda Exodus chapter 24, verse 4. And Moshe wrote all the words of Yahuwah and rose up early in the morning, built an altar under the hill and 12 pillars according to the 12 tribes of Yashrael or Israel. Okay, now here is where we, I want you to see, start seeing some things about build. Because the root word of a child is bana, or children is bana, and it has to do with building. Now, notice in Psalms 127, verse 1 Except Yahuwah build the house, they labor in vain that build it. And except you who will keep the city, the watchman wake but in vain. Proverbs 24, 3. Through wisdom is an house built. And understanding it is established. So, when we're trying to construct our lives for worship, we're trying to build our temple. Because you are a temple of the Ruach Kodesh. You're trying to make it acceptable in his sight. 
Don't you think you should have some diagrams to go by? Or do you just wing it? You know how you ever seen somebody wing it? You try to wing a doghouse? Some people might be able to do it because they have the experience. But for those that don't have the experience, that doghouse is going to be sideways, lopsided, and looking bad. You try to build your house without uh, instructions. Just wing it and you don't know anything. So when we're trying to construct and we're trying to get ourselves place where we can command the Father's presence, because we have done his instructions. This is what I want you to see. We need a pattern. We need a diagram. We need something to go by in order to um, make this acceptable for the master builder. Now, the word for pattern is, and the way you pronounce this, this would be tab neat. Tab neat. Okay, and it's a structure by implication, a model or resemblance. Guess what its root word is? Bana. Isn't that see it right? You can see it right here. Because you can spell uh you know when when you're adding stuff that's um that's how you c come out with different forms but the root word for for uh tab neat neat is bana to build so let's look at pattern which comes from the same root word as does children or son. Okay, so let's go over here. Let's go back to scripture. And let's look at pattern. Now keep in mind that the Hebrew word for pattern and the Hebrew word for children come from the same root word which means to build. Okay? According to all that I show thee after the pattern of the tabernacle. See pattern right there? Let me let me just show you because I don't want you to think I'm making this stuff up. Okay? See it right there? Tab neat and the root word, bana. Did you did you see it? All I did was just click here, and you can see it down here in this square too. It'll bring it up. To build children or son and pattern come from the same root word. the same root word and what I'm doing I'm scrolling back up Bain a son as a builder of family name in a wide sense so I just I'm just showing you that these words and where does it come from but nah to build so this is going to be, uh, going forward, this is going to be how we're going to have to work this out. We've got to take a pattern that he's already put in place and model ourselves after that pattern. And when we model ourselves in our lives after that pattern, then his presence comes 
according to all that I showed thee after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make it. Okay, Exodus chapter 25, verse 40. And look that thou make them after their pattern, which was showed thee in the mount. So when he was in the mountain, Mount Sinai, the father showed him a picture or a pattern from Shamaim. So the master, the master place is in Shamaim. And the tabernacle was built after the pattern that was shown in Shamaim. So there's a tabernacle, a place in Shamaim, and Moses got that diagram and he implemented it deep down here on earth. Now we need to take that same pattern and implement it in ourselves so that we can have his presence with us. Okay, and look look here. And this work of the candlestick or menorah was of beaten gold unto the shaft thereof, unto the flowers thereof, was a beaten work according according unto the pattern appearance there which Yahuwah showed Moshe, so he made the candlesticks. So this is where we're going, Ms. Baka. We're going to look in the coming weeks at the tabernacle because this is where his presence was. And we're going to look and examine it. And we're going to see this pattern in the tabernacle. And we're going to, uh, the Father willing, we're going to look at every piece. So I don't know how long this is going to go. We're going to look at every piece and everything that was constructed, what it was constructed of, and, and try to pull out all the stuff that we can so that we can model our worship and ourselves and our lives after this pattern. And if we do this, we will, we will command his presence. And that's what we want in our worship. We want his presence. We want his fire of approval upon us. So I know this week's lesson was a little bit longer, but it, it's going to set us up. So start researching. We're going we're gonna to start looking at the tabernacle. And we're going to see how to lay this thing out. Because if you truly want to approach him, you have to approach him and you have to build something he's familiar with. See, many things, remember the, the sons of Aaron had strange fire. See, if he's not familiar with it, he destroys it. So you want to find out what the father approves, what he's familiar with, what can be in his presence. Then you pattern yourself after that. Then his presence is not a problem. But if you start bringing strange things before him, things that he's commanded not, you bring sin before him and you didn't approach it in how he said to bring it, to get forgiveness, then you get destroyed. So we want to learn to do what's acceptable in his sight. We want to be his children, the children of Israel. 
which comes from the root word bana, which means to build. We want him to build us. He, we want him to make us. We want him to show us. Because we've been trying to do our own thing for too long. Using patterns from the world. Using patterns he isn't familiar with. Things he doesn't accept. He only accepts what he has outlined. That's what is acceptable. And he shows you right in his word. So what we're going to do, we're going to start breaking all this stuff down. So that you can become a vessel of honor and not a vessel of dishonor. So this is the beginning of a long lesson <laughs> that we're going to start up next week. So next week. Uh, we look at the heavenly pattern that was built on earth as a model for us in approaching the Father in worship. So uh, this this was just the tip of the iceberg. So um, start looking at the tabernacle um, and all its inner workings, and we're going to find the Father's pattern because we're going to make we're going to fashion ourselves after. The pattern that he's established. So I hope this lesson uh, was insightful. But it's going to be in even more excite exciting and insightful as we go along. Because we're going to see, be able to see with our own eyes, the patterns that he wants us to establish in ourselves. So just keep me in prayer because Miss McCoy, I just want to give you what the Father's given me. And I really think uh, as we begin to build this um, and build it according to Scripture, build your worship life, it's really going to explode. And we're going to see His presence and we're going to have new reports coming in. We're going to have uh, people just being renewed because... It tells us in first in uh, John that he's seeking worshipers, not just any worshiper, those that worship him in spirit and in truth. So you have to go back to the examples that were outlined in the Brit Hadashah, things that might have been hidden that we haven't. You know, many people don't really take time to study, but we're going to pull those things out and we're going to show you. And I'm looking for the Father to give us some awesome revelation and to take your life to a whole new realm. That's what I'm looking for, Yahuwah Elohim, to do for you. All right, Ms. Baka, Um, If you want to join our bookmark and witnessing team, no matter where you are around the world, we'll get them to you. Just go to our website, uh, www.bm.hebrewfoundation.org and submit your request. If you would like to support us, um, you can support us. You can mail your support in. Or you can go to living-branch.org. Uh, living or you can go to hebrewfoundation.org. And you can give by PayPal, which this is our PayPal email address. Or you can use the online donation tool. If you use the online donation tool, you can use Quick Give if you want to give credit card or debit card. If you want to use a bank account, uh, register and it'll allow you to do that and you can even schedule your giving so Miss Makai um, I'm excited for the upcoming Shabbat this was just uh, almost all of these have been intros uh, these parts but we're getting ready to get into some uh, serious life changing patterns for our lives so make sure you stay prayed up make sure you continue to pray for me and I would do likewise. And, you know, we just thank the Father for what he's given us today. He's going to take us to a new level. I see and believe it. And we're going to behold his esteem. So for now, this.